Hey everybody, this is Jo. I'm here in Houston. I am in zone 9B and I have a cottage style butterfly garden and I am going to give you a little look at both the front and the back today. This is the front yard that I have a lot of native plants in and I'm going to show you a couple of things that are doing really really well in the garden and I will point out which ones are Texas natives. And I have done a lot of pulling out a lot, a lot of weeding and a lot of sort of what I call tough love gardening, which is, this looks nice, but it's in the way of something else I care about more. And so I have cut back some things and I've pulled out a lot of things. Um, I'm doing this in the evening. And so uh, I have beautiful Texas rock roses, but they have closed up for the evening. But that's what most of this is. And then here is a nice penta. I love these big pentas and the bees do too. You can see him flying around. And then this beautiful swath here is salvia farinacea and that is a Texas native. And I've got here, this is a jewels of opar and that is a Texas native plant. And look at its sweet tiny little flowers and really fun red uh, seed pods. And then next to it is another Texas native. This is a purple cone flower. That's Echinacea. This, I think, is a bigger one. I think that is the uh, native variety. And then these shorter ones, which are super deep pink. They're looking pretty ratty. It's been very, this has been, the last week has been the hottest that this week in Texas, in Houston, has ever been. It's been 98 degrees for like five days in a row. And so things are a little crispy out here. Um, but they're still blooming. You can see, even though the, the plants themselves are a bit ratty, they're still blooming. And then here's one of the things that I cut back, which is Agora, also a native Texas plant. You can see it's all coming back from the bottom. And um, it has lovely white flowers. And then here's one of the things I'm super excited about. This big puffball here, there's another one there, there's another one there. That is all uh, Dwarf Barbados Cherry. It's a native plant to Texas, and it is covered in buds, and look at its little flowers. And it is gonna be, I don't know if you can tell on the video how many little pink buds there are. And you can see all in there and all over here. And, um, and boy, they've come into their own. I'm thrilled with that. And they're so pretty. And I did see an actual cherry on the, on one of the bushes in the background um, earlier this year. And I meant to show it to you and then I forgot to get it on video and then I couldn't find it, of course. But um, that's gonna be just a stunner. And then tucked in here is another native. That is a aquatic milkweed, so pretty. And then of course, here's a zinnia. And then this little pop of purple is um, a native var. This is a dwarf variety of Salvia lucantha, which is native to uh, Mexico. And I choose to believe it has hopped the border on its own and is probably native to a little bit of Texas, but I'm just splitting hairs there. It does beautifully in Texas. Another native is blue mist flower and it can be quite aggressive. You can see it's sprawling out into the grass, which is fine with me. And here's a pink variety of that Gora. And it, um, it this one is much smaller. Uh, it's probably a year younger than that other one, which was huge, I just cut back. This one's doing really nicely. And then up in here, this is porter weed. Sorry, it's really bright out here. I didn't realize when I started videoing that it was so bright. This is porterweed. I have a purple variety. This is not native to Texas, but there is one that is native to Texas that is called blue porterweed. So you have to watch for that if you're being uh, really um, uh, trying to do just Texas natives. If you're looking for a native one, you've got to look for the blue porterweed. Here is the full size. Uh, Mexican bush stage, Salvia lucantha, with its little velvety uh, flowers. More milkweed, oh, and boy, the bees. I see little bees on these milkweed plants. 
all the time, all day long. And um, I'm amazed at how much uh, they draw the bees. Here's another little, I've got a lot of the same things mixed in. Here's a pink Gora. Here's more of the uh, jewels of Opar right there. Now I trimmed back um, pretty much all of my salvia coccinea. Um, and so it is uh, looking <laughs> just green, kind of shrubby. Here's my favorite purple salvia. This is, let's see if I can get you the prettiest, freshest flowers. That is uh, Mystic Spires salvia. And I just love it. And I really like it sort of mixed in and next to this big pink penta. And then look at this beautiful blue. That is uh, up Cape Plumbago. And the tree in here, Desert Willow, which I put it, it's, you know, it says desert. Houston gets tons of rain. So I put this in a pot so it wouldn't get, and then I sort of don't water it. And this doesn't seem to mind not being watered too much. And then this beautiful sweet potato plant um, in there, it doesn't seem to mind not having very much e uh, extra water. My roses, they're trying, but goodness, it's been hot. This is mutabilis. And I love the peachy, it changes colors uh, on the bush. The flowers change colors, and I love the sort of peachy pink uh, day. And then this is a uh, fragrant mist flower down here. It never blooms, but I grow it as a butterfly host. Um, but it's gotten kind of big back there, a little bit jungly. And then I'm going to come right through the middle. Now I've done some shorts on some of these individual um, native plants. And so if you want to take a look, if you're interested in a particular plant, look at my shorts feed and see um, if I have already talked about sort of in, in depth about uh, what you're interested in. Let's see, I have not made it easy for myself to get back in here. These big old trees, this is a um, tulip magnolia, and then a crepe myrtle that was existing uh, when we moved in. I would not personally grow a crepe myrtle, even though they have beautiful bark and pretty flowers, but um, they are, they're non-native, and I think that there are prettier native choices, um, but boy, I've got some, I inherited some very pretty ones um, in this yard. And here in a pot back here, I've got black and blue salvia. I've got it in a pot here because it is so um, aggressive that it, and it, it goes by um, runners. It, it spreads by runners. It will take over your garden if you're not careful. And so I have it in the ground in the backyard. Um, if I could go back in time and put it somewhere else, uh, I would because it's too much. I'm always pulling it up, but I like it in a pot. It's very well behaved in a pot. And then I've got this beautiful oak leaf hydrangea in, in deep, quite deep shade. It gets a tiny bit, you can see a little blue sky. So for a little while it gets shade, but not much. And then this is a southern wood fern, which is in very deep shade. This is also a Texas native, and this is Texas native, I don't know if I said that. And then I just did a short on this amazing small tree, large bush called uh, the southern wax myrtle and it has covered with little berries and birds of all sorts will come and eat these all winter long and then climbing over the fence from the backyard i've got a um, purple hyacinth bean vine which this one's got an awful lot of aphids on it but still pretty you can still see the see the little purple hopping over the top loving this little uh, grass. I don't know the name of it. I bought it on a whim and it's just as cute as it can be. This is about as tall as it gets. I don't know if it's called rabbit's foot or something. I don't know what kind of grass that is, but I really like it and it's very sweet. Now I still got some uh, cleomes. So they kind of pooped out here uh, 
at the end of the day, but I've still got a couple of Cleums here. And then I've got a couple of big ones over there I'll show you. And then this is a little gumfrina I planted from seed, but because it's been tucked back here, kind of in the shade, um, it's been slow to get going, but I think it's kind of picking up some speed back here. And I do love the pinkish uh, tint on the stems as well. And then here's a whole host of that aquatic milkweed and a little bit in the ground. This will all go in the ground when it's not too hot. And then one of the things I wanted to show you deep in the depths back here, these plants, this one and that one and that one, those are evergreen Walters viburnum and they are native and they bloom off and on all year. So here I was surprised in the middle of September when it's almost 100 degrees out every single day for the last week and here it is blooming and I know I had some blooming on Christmas last year so it just sort of spits out here and there it's evergreen oh look how pretty I haven't been back here little flowers all over it and I tr am sort of testing this out to see if it can be used sort of like a boxwood but it is native and um, a little tougher I have cut this you can maybe see I sort of clipped it into a ball and then these are the the pieces that have grown up in the last couple of months but you could definitely keep it clipped this one did beautifully these were all planted on the same day this one is much smaller and a little ratty and then this one I thought was dead and I cut it back very very hard and it has sort of popped back up but it's not that beautiful um, sort of round shape um, that the other ones were and then here's the back of that just big swath of um, salvia farinacea so pretty all right let me take you around all the way through back here this is a curcuma ginger turmeric oh no <laughs> that was exciting okay i'm getting a grip now literally and figuratively this I planted a million million years ago and it never did well and then I just noticed it back here and I was like oh surprise surprise I that was kind of fun for that to to show up um, unannounced it's always fun to see something I had a, a schoolhouse lily a blood lily I think it's also called show up in my backyard um, last week and it, I had planted it years ago and forgotten it even existed. It hadn't bloomed in, in, you know, a decade. And yet there it was. All right, you can see how, if you want to see what this, this is all salvia coccinea. And uh, it's this beautiful pink. And um, if you want to see what this looked like before I trimmed it back, um, I made a short about it and it was magnificent. Um, but it kind of went over. So now I'm giving it another chance. Oh, here's what it looked like. I didn't cut this side back. These are kind of kind of ratty, but it gives you an idea of the color. Just a really pretty pink. And then this gomfrina, you guys. <gasps> Isn't it amazing? I love this so much. This I planted from seed. Here's another one that has come up from seed. I bought this plant and then I've just sort of picked seeds off of it during the year. Um, it's very, it's a very prolific cedar, not an aggressive cedar, but if you want it to come up, um, I was thinking maybe I could get some off for you. If you want it to come up, you know, fling some seeds around, you'll probably get something. I'm loving this. More milkweed and another one of these. And then this ratty thing is uh, a purple salvia i don't know the variety it was here when we moved in 15 years ago and um, it's very low and sprawly but it has made it through every winter um, it's done really well and a lot of these things are um, volunteers i've got volunteer zinnias always coming up and then my massive massive bed of frog fruit that i'm hoping will take over my whole yard so sweet 
jewels of opar out here looking sweet and then this one didn't get <laughs> this one didn't get hit by the sprinkler and i didn't come out the front door and so i'm probably gonna uh i'm probably gonna pull this up but i do want to show you look at the seed situation <laughs> but I just keep sprinkling it around. This is a drift rose. It's just a white one. I don't know the variety name, but I think it's just sort of their standard white uh, drift rose. And then I've got a couple things. We're gonna pull all this out. And um, I've talked about what I'm gonna do here I'll, and I'll talk about it again. But for now, um, I'm just letting this, normally I would clip this back, but all of this non-native ground cover is coming out eventually uh, because we lost that tree. And so I'm just letting this just do what it wants. If it wants to kill this, like have at it. Good luck. Wonderful shrimp plant. Oh, and I haven't really seen, look at that little bitty bee, a little, little solitary bee getting down in there. Isn't he cute? I don't think that's a, uh, maybe that is a honeybee. And then here's my little stand of, uh, of white Cleomes that have stayed really pretty um, while the rest of the pink ones have kind of pooped out. These all ended up being white on this side and um, they still look nice. And then here is a big bunch of, uh, of the Texas Rock Rose, which is um, planted here, but sort of pooped out for the evening. And another blue, Cape Plumbago, and this is a pink fire spike, but it is not blooming. It, it usually blooms. It hates me a little. It usually blooms literally the week before it freezes. It is such a late bloomer. Here's another Mutabilis. You can see small flowers, pretty rough looking. I think this is due to the heat. And then look, y'all, at the purple hyacinth bean vine and I'm just leaving all these beans I will collect the seeds and plant this again next year and it's got some pretty flowers still and again I'm kind of just letting this go and then I was, I'm so bummed. I saw a, uh, this is passion vine and it's the host plant for the Gulf fritillary butterfly. And I saw one out here and then I saw a little egg on one of the leaves and now it's gone. I think one of the lizards just had a little snack. And uh, so that egg is gone, but I'm letting it, it did not bounce back at all like I expected it to um, after it got munched down uh, early in the year um, by butterfly caterpillars. I'm gonna let it, this rose bush is probably 20 years old, predates me, and it hasn't looked good in 10 years. And so if this uh, vine ends up in there, I'm just gonna let it happen. These roses are not very happy. You can see, I really need to cut a bunch of this down. Um, they just have, I've put a lot of roses here over the years, and I have just had such mis mixed success. I think I'm gonna just like, call it, uh, as my favorite character on Schitt's Creek would say, get a hammer and nail this coffin shut. And that's how I'm feeling about those rose bushes. <laughs> I trimmed these rose bushes back really hard. They were getting out of control. And so hopefully that'll give them, I've been trying to water them and that'll give them a little start for the fall. And my husband, got a little bench for all of his um, bonsai and so we're really excited about that I think that's super fun and then this is sort of a holding area for things that I couldn't stop myself from buying but also uh, it's too hot to plant so that's the holding the holding area you can see I have been weeding And I've got this sweet palafox really starting to bloom. That's a Texas wildflower and I love it. I've been collecting seeds. And then, oof, boy oh boy, have I pulled a bunch of stuff out of here. So I pulled, right here was a huge, huge salvia coccinea that just never seemed to bloom. And I thought, you know what? 
uh, I'm feeling um, ruthless. And so if you're not blooming and performing like I hope, I'm pulling you out. And that's the, that's like the, the vibe, as my daughter would say, that's the vibe I have right now is like, if you're not doing your job, out you go. And so I took it out from right here, leaving a bunch of space and some sun, right? The sun can now reach this. You can see this is a, um, this is a Duranta and it is huge, 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 huge. Up here, that's probably five and a half feet high. Oh, there's a butterfly flapping around. And it's gotten really big, really, really big. But where I had that Salvia coccinea, it has not come out this way. And so I sort of tucked a few things up in there, little things, and I'm hoping that'll fill in um, and look really pretty this fall. And then, um, I put, oh gosh, I, you can just see it's all laid down. This is all this lovely gomfrina, but it's very breakable. And so when I tromped around in there, I kind of smushed it all. So, you know, what are you going to do? I was, it had to take the hit. Something had to take the hit. Okay, you guys, I planted um, chives, like edible chives. I don't think these are what I thought, I, I think I bought was edible chives, not um, like those white ones that are um, ornamental. And it's been sitting here ignoring me for a year almost. And all of a sudden, it's got all kinds of little buds on it. And I'm hoping this should all be little pink puff balls, which actually are gonna end up kind of looking like that. And here is Thai basil, which is looking pretty good. Now, I, I weeded a lot of this last week, two weeks ago, and watered it really heavily. And look how pretty. This looks so fresh and it's all upright because I haven't trampled around it. And this pretty, this is that spicy globe basil. And look how pretty and fluffy. And I've got a couple more going here and a little bitty one there. And then I've got some fennel coming up from seed, which I'm really happy about. And this is looking so pretty in this pot. I'm going to, I'm waiting for it to cool off to put all of those pots of um, aquatic milkweed down in there. And I planted a ton of fennel seeds and then my yard guys helped me uh, mulch and I would not have put mulch there, but I was not there. <laughs> I threw mulch in there and covered up all my seeds. Oh, Miss Doubtfire, did you hear that video was happening? Yes. I'm waiting. Look how pretty this is. This is um, a Nepeta cat mint and um, it just looks so pretty. It's not blooming right now, but it looks so beautiful. And my little elephant ears. And if you haven't figured out yet, I'm a little obsessed with aquatic milkweed. And there's more of that lovely um, black and blue salvia. So pretty. And I'm still loving the Blackfoot Daisy. Really happy. There's the Blackfoot Mist Outfire. <laughs> she says no. Nearly Wild is looking good. Now I think I've got a thrip problem back here with my roses and so they look awful and I need to get out here and cut them all off. Um, and I have a little short somewhere from last year about what I do when I have to deal with thrips. Um, it's just been too hot to even handle it. That's Mexican Hat, which has been an amazing wildflower. It's a Texas wildflower and it's been gorgeous for, I don't know, six or seven months now. It's amazing. There's a bunch of roses back in here that are pretty scruffy. But I tucked a bunch of uh, Salvia Mystic Spires back in here. Oh, here's some of that pink Salvia Coccinea. That's more, that looks like maybe it's more like a um, coral nymph. But here, this is just my favorite Salvia. And I tucked a bunch of it in here to uh, camouflage some ills. Um, and I love, I love that it's back there. And then I've been through, I have this sort of empty spot and I stuck this in here um, and this little obelisk in here and I've been throwing seeds back here to see what would come up. And then my super sweet 
backyard dude came and <laughs> covered him up with mulch. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, look how sweet all of this uh, Mystic Spire Salvia looks. I'm just loving it. And oh, here's, here's a rose that doesn't look too destroyed by thrips. This is, hmm, I think this is Souvenir de la Malmaison, which should be three times that big. <laughs> I've got nice little Gomfrina that has popped up nicely and some in there. And you see that big thing right there? That is a weed that's like five feet tall. So I clearly didn't get over there. A lot more of the purple hyacinth bean vine taking that over and looking so pretty. And the shade, you know, it's never the star. <laughs> it's never the star of the show, is it? But here is beautiful um, grasses coming up. And oh, and a nice little volunteer cone flower down there. That was kind of fun. more salvia leucantha starting to bloom and then i bought look what i got for my birthday look at that incredible pot and one of them came cracked way cracked like replace it please cracked but not so cracked that i couldn't use it so it's over there <laughs> but you know how it is uh and i found some really pretty um angel wing, dragon wing, whatever you want to call them, uh, begonias. And um, so that's making me super happy. Oh, it's a little squirrel probably digging in one of my pots. There's the other one. And it's got a different color, different variety in there. And these are the kind of pots that will get um, all mossy and green. And speaking of mossy and green, that one I've had for about Two years and look how, I just love that I love all that mossy business it makes me happy and I've bought a few other things to just sort of cheer up you know I've been waiting for it to cool off to replace what got trampled after the um, after the hurricane when all the linemen came and just sort of destroyed everything so I'm just waiting it's just empty so that's my excuse for buying more more flowers and putting them in pots and then I've got more of this big big penta this is a hotter pink than in the front and then this salvia eulogenosa that's bog sage and it's looking really pretty back here isn't it and it takes a lot of shade it's in that place mid-september where it looks rough, but it makes me happy and it provides lots of habitat for pollinators. I have seen butterflies, crazy amounts of butterflies out here. And I've seen a ton of little toads of all sizes. I don't know what happened. We had some kind of toad explosion and uh, there are toads everywhere. I keep seeing them just hippity hop and it's making me really happy. So we've got lots of habitat out here so that even if it doesn't look like a polished, you know, English garden, it's still gloriously green and beautiful. It's my little oasis and it's so fun, y'all. I hope you guys are having fun in your gardens and I hope it is not 100 degrees where you are. And um, I'm watching the gulf. Oh, I am thinking about everybody in the path of this new storm uh, that may be rolling through sort of Louisiana, Florida area. Uh, and so I'm thinking about y'all as I know all about hurricanes and how awful that can be. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.